Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here. In the last couple of days I've been out doing a bit of shooting down by the coastline again. I'm in a beautiful area and the weather's amazing. But while I was out here and I'm just taking a bit of a break this morning, I've just brought the 4x4 up to this top field and just chilling out here enjoying the weather. I thought I'd just make a short video just showing you the guns that I use and just talk a bit about them. I've got two shotguns in front of me here. I've got a 12 bore and a 410 both side by side and these are the two guns I own and use and I also wanted to show you some of the gear that goes with it like ear protection, gloves, kind of cartridges that I use and also some of the cartridges that I reload just to give you a bit of an idea and a clearer picture on what I do with these guns and how I use them. So the first gun I'll show you is the 12 bore side by side and this is it just here and this is made by Fausti Stefano uh, in Italy and if anyone's familiar with that manufacturer, it's Three Sisters and they make some beautiful guns and this is probably one of their least expensive ones and I bought this from New some time ago for about £700 and going back in time, in hindsight, it's always a, a wonderful thing if I went back in time now and I was starting shooting again I knew what I knew now <laughs> it's always the case, isn't it? with everything in life and I would probably buy a second-hand AYA or BSA for around about £250 and it would almost be identical in performance and what it could do and it'd probably be a bit of a rougher gun being second-hand and you could use it a bit more confidently out in the field without worrying about knocks and dents but this one's quite old now despite the fact that I look after stuff pretty well I, I do really look after these things but I'm not afraid to use them at the same time I just employ some good maintenance after I use it. But you can see the barrel's covered with big scratches and dents. I mean, it, it's, it's a tool at the end of the day and you've got to use it and that's the way it goes. But the specifics of this gun, I don't know the weight of it, but I'll put all of the other information in the description because I've forgotten a lot of it and the manual doesn't actually tell you an awful lot about it, to be quite honest with you. But it's not loaded, just so you know. And it's a really lovely, well-balanced gun. And that's why I love side-by-sides and guns built for the field because they spin on a pivot. If you're walking like this quite quietly and you've got your eyes open, really perceptive, something makes a sudden move, you can mount really fast and take that shot and just do it on instinct. And uh, most of the time you can get a good shot on instinct. And um, it's on the clay range that I find you think about the shot too much, you get too much time and then you, you start missing because you, you're overthinking it. You've got to go a bit primal, really, when you're hunting. But this has got 28-inch barrels, which is a good length for all-round field use. I'd probably go longer if I was into wild fowling. I wouldn't go any shorter. The chokes are a quarter on the right barrel, which goes off first, and a half on the left barrel, which goes off last. And it's a single trigger. Ideally, I would like a double trigger, like my little 410 there. But, as again, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But it does make it quite quick on the mark. You don't have to switch triggers, which is one advantage of it. But the disadvantage is with a with a with a gun like this is you you can't have two guns in one in some respects with a um, a double trigger. You could have one cartridge in here that's different to the cartridge loaded in there, and you can decide which one goes off first. So if you're walking along and you spot a rabbit at distance, and you've got a heavier cartridge loaded in this barrel here on a tighter choke then you can get that range and decide to take that first. With this, you're fixed with right barrel going off first, then left barrel, and that's the disadvantage with it. Another feature of this gun is it's got ejectors. You may say, well, what are ejectors? And if you look at the actual breech section of the gun, you'll see that there's an extended part of the breech that actually pops out when you break the gun. If I do this and pull this lever here and break the barrels, you'll see that these ejectors pop out. And what will happen is, if I fired one shot, a little spring pops out and the cartridge ejects away. Now, again, that has its pros and cons. If you're out hunting, you can load really fast, but you don't want to litter the ground with your cartridges, so you will have to pick them up. So I usually tuck the stock under my arm and just catch the cartridge like this, and I can pop it in my pocket or just toss it on the ground so it doesn't fly into a bush and I can never find the cartridge. Overall, these guns are very easy to look after. You can actually service them yourself if you're competent with, with taking them apart. I've taken this whole gun apart many a time to do various things to it. 
it's not loaded by the way but you can see if I push this button at the top here just here the foregrip comes off and I can take that off and for a security measure as well if traveling it's always good to take that off it means if your car gets stolen for example the gun is useless because this is part of the trigger mechanism and the pins cannot cock without it and the gun is effectively useless and then to get this component it would cost double what the gun costs to get it manufactured because these guns are handmade and uh, you can't just go and buy one of these off the shelf it would need to come from the manufacturer so a good little security measure to take that off you can read about that if you get into shooting and then you just put this braking lever there and the barrels come off and then you can clean the barrels clean the breech there and do all the necessary bits and bobs to it that you need to do but in terms of the issues I've had with this gun I uh, had to redo the entire stock I split the stock on it basically um, all the way down there I cracked it and I cracked it by putting really really heavy cartridges through it which you shouldn't really do with a side by side but when I was new to shooting it was all about you know I want to try big cartridges and you sort of get carried away with reloading them you try various reloading recipes and um, you know you, you just get silly with it sometimes don't you it's how you learn by breaking things a lot of the time but uh, I fired a shot, I, I was out testing this, and I, I was doing some field testing, I had some targets out. Fired, fired a shot and basically noticed when I got home that the stock had split. And um, I was pretty disappointed, I sent it back to the manufacturer. They don't warrant, have a warranty on, on stocks, and I know a lot of gun manufacturers won't do that these days, simply because there can be parts of the grain that are weak, and they might not realise it, and then it just splits. I've seen some really pricey guns, some, some lovely Berettas, riddled with cracks. They still work fine, but you know they're just natural weaknesses in the wood. Fortunately, since refinishing this, I've had no problems, and to refinish it, I had to take this off. It was only an oiled stock, so it didn't have any lacquer on it. I had to boil it in a barrel, and I boiled it in the barrel for, for ages and got all the oil and all the dirt out. It raised all the grain up. I had to sand the grain down, boil again, raise the grain, sand again. I did that about six or seven times until the grain stops rising and it's very, very smooth. And then I used troil and I thinned down the first five coats of troil with meths or white spirit, I can't quite remember. So it gets a real deep soak and that's how you get a nice shimmering effect on the stock. And that, those coats soak in, you apply them sort of a couple of coats a day and then you use thicker troil and apply it on and this is a, an in the wood finish rather than an on the wood finish meaning there is no layer like lacquered layer on the actual wood it's not like varnish this has been soaked with oil and the oil sets that's what, how troil works and the water beads off this, this now and it's solid as a rock and obviously I had to epoxy all of this and put a small piece of dowel in to hold the split together it was a bit of a pain but unfortunately I had no choice you know I had to do it so I just sort of taught myself how to do it. I haven't redone this bit yet. You can see it's slightly darker than this part here, but I will get round to it one day. You do have to mask off this checkering or the etching here on the actual stock or else you can really soften it down by sanding it. But it's a good project to do. I re the barrels on this as well. Um, just cold bluing. Just why I wooled a lot of it down and had to re-blue quite a bit of it. And you can sort of heat it up with a the heat gun and everything and and do it the proper way but it is a field gun at the end of the day and it's covered in scratches and dents but this is the 12 ball hopefully i've covered everything about it and um if you have any questions do ask me i'll try and get back to you i get a lot of comments these days and, and messages and stuff and i don't really get time to answer all of them but um it's a beautiful gun and obviously you can watch some of the hunting vids on the channel if you're new to this video you don't really know a lot about me or, or what goes on on the channel and you can see it in action. The second gun I've got here is this little 410 and this is a fantastic field gun, very lightweight, brilliant for scouting around. It folds down as well, it's called a poacher's gun. So it folds in half like this so you can put it on the side of your pack or stow it into a backpack. But you can see it just clips in, 
and there we go it just locks the barrels and you've got a lever there and it breaks the barrels like so and you've got the button on this side push that and fold it up and it fits very nicely on my LK35 actually just slid down the side in between the pouch and the actual backpack so if I go off and do a bit of wild camping or any kind of excursion where I want to travel light I can take this gun with me and the fantastic thing is the cartridges weigh almost nothing in some respects for a shotgun shotgun cartridges are incredibly heavy if you think about how much these weigh you know at 32 grams or well, let's say 40 grams including plastic and brass and etc and powder you think about how much you, know, you times that by 100 cartridges you've got a, an awful lot of weight there and you're suddenly carrying tons of weight it's not a very practical gun for carrying in the field on trips like this um, when it comes to weight of actual ammunition but a little gun like this is, is fantastic and uh, it has the same range as the 12 ball, exactly the same range and a very similar pattern it's just a lot less dense because there's less lead this has two full chokes on the end so these are the tightest chokes you can get two full chokes which is beneficial on a small gun like this because you really want to kind of maximise that shot pattern on such a, a small amount of lead it does have 28 inch barrels and it's hammer action so you can see you've got two hammers there the right trigger operates the first hammer, the left trigger, the second hammer, so right and left, it's pretty easy. In terms of recoil, it has very little recoil. It's a, a very lightweight gun that a child could use quite happily if they were getting into shooting. And it's in great condition for something around about £200. It's a fantastic addition to go alongside the 12 ball for when you need a bit of a lighter gun and you only have a license for shotguns like myself and you want something quite small to take out in the field. Going any smaller, an air rifle would be even more useful and much quieter. The disadvantage with an air rifle that I think a lot of people who don't know a lot about guns don't realise is you can't take game on the run. Um, an air rifle requires a whole different set of skills and an awful lot of patience and um, you can't just startle things and take a shot hoping to hit it. But a lovely gun and fantastic for packing away. So hopefully I've covered those guns in enough detail for you that you've got a bit of an idea of why I use them and, and what I use them for and why I like them. And uh, although some of them aren't ideal, you end up with things and you make them work for you. And I wanted to tell you a bit about the gear I use alongside the guns. And one question I often get is uh, why I wear ear protection when using guns when I'm hunting. But these are MSA Supreme Pros and they're made by Sordin and they record all the noise around you. So if I put them on now, I can't, they're, they're like normal ear, ear sort of muffs now. I can't really hear anything. Sounds like I'm underwater talking. But if I push this button here, I can hear everything perfectly. And all the noise around me is being picked up by these two microphones here and being played back to me instantly through my ears. And I can look around, I can hear the birds, I can hear the ocean. The only disadvantage of them is directional. So because the microphones are pointing this way, even though they pick up sounds around me, behind me can be a bit distorted. I can turn down the volume, so the volume's quite low now. I can turn it up to full, and it almost gives you better hearing than you originally had um, when it comes to very light ambient noises. But it's just the directional side of it that I've always found a bit of a disappointment with. But that's probably because you've got to spend a lot of money. These things weren't cheap. They're about £200. And that's a lot of money for ear protection. But because I used to shoot all the time, every week, or every weekend I was out. I was doing crop protection for various farmers. Me and my brother would be out all the time shooting, doing clays on, on like little competitions and things. It made sense to spend money on my hearing and for me £200 to protect my ears is, is, not, is not a lot of money. I do wear gloves as well. These are 511 gloves, brand new pair, got them the other day. I always buy them slightly too tight and I soak them in water and then stretch them out and let them dry. And uh, These are fantastic gloves, 511 NFO I think they are, tactical gloves, good for cooking as well got a leather side to them as well. So I wear gloves sometimes when I shoot. I've got various things that I wear on my belt that hold cartridges. 
I've got things that are Velcro. So these are just things I've, I've basically made with elastic and Velcro. You can Velcro them on to various parts of your body. I used to have like a Velcro plate that hung off my belt and I'd stick these on there and I could organize whatever cartridges I wanted into them. But nowadays I pick this up for about 15 quid second hand and um, it's a lovely bit of leather. It goes on the belt nicely. You can just carry a couple of cartridges on you. I don't want too many when I'm out shooting, so I'm not after too much most of the time. Have a cleaning kit. This is for 4, 10 and 12 bore. And uh, I've got a variety of things in there, including the original butt plate and a foregrip holder. When you're out on game days and you're shooting, well not game days, but clay days, I don't do pheasant shooting, but I, um, I generally just rough shoot or I go down the clay range, basically. This is the original butt plate that comes with the 12 ball. You can see it's a nice piece of walnut there, but I don't use that anymore. I've kept it in case I sell the gun, which I hope I never have to. And I've got this, and this slips on like so. Because what happens is when you've let off 50 cartridges in a row, the barrels are red hot and you can't hold them anymore. So you want to be holding something like that. And that's nice if you're on a, a clay day and you've got to do you know, a simulated shoot and there's tons of clays flying at you and you're letting them off. You know, you'll see me going like this, shaking, shaking the heat out of my hands if I don't have this on clay days. And I do also have a bit of suede that I've made and it just goes around the stock there. And if I'm sort of navigating through horrible terrain, like I am down here with all this gorse, I don't want to scratch the hell out of my stock just for the hell of it. So I put that on. I have a gun sling here too. Really nice sling. I picked this up on eBay for about a tenner. Never seen them since. Slips on just like that. This part loops around here. Ooh. It's got a draw toggle there, leather toggle. It goes like that. You can carry it on your back quite nicely. Put this leather part on and you've got a pretty well protected good field gun to just get out there with and do a bit of shooting. And it's really nice. Great setup. Various other things in here like oils and I've got a bore scrubber. This is for the breech and then a snake bore just to pull through. And usually when I've scrubbed the breech, with a, just put a bit of oil in the breech and scrub it with the breech scrubber to loosen the dirt and help lift it away. Two pulls through with the bore scrubber and it's literally like looking down a, a mirror in those barrels. So that's pretty much the, the extent of my gun cleaning, although I do put oil in the action, clean the action out. I have an old toothbrush that I use for scrubbing things out getting it nice and clean and every so often it's nice to give your guns a service take the action off see what condition they're in they pick up dirt and grime you can give them a clean out and just check the components and then make sure they're functioning correctly but when I'm out in the field and let's say I take the little 410 with me and I'm in horrible wet weather I've got a little pot here that has fat in you've seen me use this a million times on the channel various fats that I use, whatever I can get hold of. Um, I tend to like to use natural things. If you do get an animal you can use the fat to, to maintain your tools but I usually rub that all over the barrel so the water beads off of it and I don't get spot rusting. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of a run through on the gear I use for shooting. It's been a bit of a mishmash this video showing you different things but I kind of wanted to do it all in one uh, as opposed to just draw it out into tons of different videos and to give you a bit of an insight on the kind of gear that I've got, the shotguns that I use, how they work, why I use them, why I like them. So I hope this video has helped out. I will put helpful links in the description to shooting channels on YouTube, things about getting shotguns, the legalities about them, things about getting permission, how do you get shooting permissions and so on. Most of the permissions I've got for shooting, I've just banged on someone's door, introduced myself, said, you know, can I do some shooting? four or five years down the line we've got a great relationship and you know I know them really well like, like I do my friends and it's just the way you let things build up naturally so a lot of the time it's just like that but thanks again for watching I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope it's helped out answer any questions about the the guns I use and the gear that goes with it and hopefully I'll see you again very soon in another video take care guys